Alyssa McKenzie. And I'm Michelle Sattler. Today, on 8 Minutes, we went on an excursion into the forest with one of our favorite unknown heroes, Frederick Haynes Newell. Here's what he had to say on his importance in history and the conservation of the U.S. Frederick Haynes Newell earned his importance in the natural world with his instrumental role in the United States Reclamation Service and Conservation Movement. Newell helped shape American history by shaping environmental laws with his position as the first director of the Reclamation Service, as chief engineer of the Geological Survey, and by drafting the Reclamation Act. He is an American hero due to his support of the conservation movement as a whole and for his contributions to the protection of our wildlife and landscapes. What did you do in the United States Reclamation Service? I was the first director of the service. Reclamation is the cultivation of wasteland or land formerly underwater. Our goal is to cultivate the land that was not being used for land development. We used money from selling arid or barren lands to purchase what I believe to be essential improvements in the irrigation and maintenance in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Without this, the environmental transformation that took place in the 13 western states in regards to dams and rivers would not have been possible. In his time as the director, he spearheaded the construction of 100 dams, 25 miles of tunnels, 1,300 miles of canals, and ditches that provided 20,000 farmers with water. By giving such access, he stimulated other parts of the economy and ensured crop growth. In your time on the geological survey, what was its relevance and how did it help improve the environment? Later, when the Reclamation Service accomplished what I intended, I became the chief engineer for the United States Geological Survey. When I graduated from MIT in 1885, I earned the necessary qualifications to be the right fit for this job. We studied the landscape and pre-existing resources of the natural world in order to find an easy way to both respect and use the resources effectively. We focused exclusively on biology, geography, geology, hydrology. This was revolutionary and crucial for the time because geology was new and unheard of. It was loosely studied by the government, but because Newell took his knowledge and documented it in books as well as teaching it, he created a possibility for more people to understand the environment. He was the first to create a deeper understanding of natural things. How were you able to be so successful in your endeavors while remaining relatively unheard of? There was no possibility for me to achieve a sliver of the things I did without my connections within the conservation movement. I became acquainted with the correct people, those that were powerful already within environmental conservation. One of my closest connections being John Wesley Powell, an explorer who discovered the Colorado River leading to the Grand Canyon, helped me get involved in such conservation organizations. Powell granted me leadership of studying the characteristics and volumes of water streams in the West and granted me 14 engineering graduates to do so, which were necessary to my study. Grove Carl, G.K. Gilbert, inspired me to write literature and document my ideas and discoveries of the environment. Gifford Pinchot also helped me get involved due to his role as the first chief of the United States Forest Service and as an important political leader. This presented Newell with the opportunity to branch out amongst different genres of engineering and geological study, which ultimately cultivated his well-roundedness and inspired him to do so much brave work. What was the biggest roadblock you had to overcome? It wasn't until I faced corruption and lost my overall innocent optimism for the job that I earned my success. By learning that most people care solely about economics, I was able to change my goals to fit what the government saw best. When they shut down the irrigation survey and cut funding for the geological survey, I realized I had to propose projects that were beneficial for a larger group and also ensure economic success for all parties involved. Some certain specific critical documents Newell prepared during his time was the Reclamation Act that was ratified by President Theodore Roosevelt. He also prepared the Census of Irrigation in 1890 and 1900. The Census of Irrigation provides the necessary information by survey about the amount of resources used and needed for each household and more. When he wrote the Reclamation Act, he also persuaded Roosevelt to spread the reclamation money evenly among all western states and territories by providing and starting up irrigation projects everywhere possible and necessary. 
Newell was a member of the Inland Waterways Commission, which made water a more effective transportation route, as well as being able to capitalize on the moat. During this same time, he was also an essential leader in the National Geographic Society, the American Geographical Society, and the American Forestry Association. His focus on forestry, geology, hydrology, and other critical environmental studies is what makes him so crucial to American history. In a time period where people weren't focused on such basic needs, he made it possible to regulate and be efficient within the natural world. His work in forestry stemmed from his work with Gifford Pinchot, where they focused on the development of national forests and the protection of such. Additionally, Newell served on the National Advisory Board for Fuels and Structural Materials, this service regulated the natural and man-made hazards of constructed facilities on the infrastructure of surrounding areas. Although this seems less influential than some of his other endeavors, Newell's expertise in such a broad range of disciplines helps to assert him as a man worthy of respect. The advisory board has been a principal unit in the U.S. since its inception in 1946, and Newell was a critical player in organizing studies, briefings, and workshops to protect the land from building hazards. While Newell's work seemed almost insignificant at the time, in just a few short years, from 1890 to 1906, he had set up 28 government projects. When completed, they were expected to irrigate as few as 8,000 acres on the Garden City Project in Kansas, to as many as 200,000 acres on the Salt River Project in Arizona and the Truckee Carson Project in Nevada. In all, more than 3 million acres would be reclaimed from the desert and 62,000 farms created. He carried water from a mountain wilderness to turn the waste places of the desert into homes for freemen, was inscripted on the Cullum Gold Medal awarded to him by the American Geographical Society. Newell's work with the environment made it possible for Americans to have access to water, for farmers to have success within their crops, and more. This man should be seen as an American hero for his contributions to the conservation movement, but also for his passionate leadership of the Reclamation Service, in addition to his countless achievements in preserving the wildlife, which is so instrumental in maintaining our society. Having clean parks and fresh drinking water is something that we Americans take for granted every day because other countries, such as third world countries, don't have this same luxury. As a society, we can thank Frederick Haynes Newell for helping us out and making sure we're living the best quality life possible, especially living in Nevada, where Frederick Haynes had a personal connection in helping with our water and irrigation. We owe him a lot. If it weren't for Frederick Haynes Newell's intelligence and determination to pursue what he believed was right, we would not be where we are today. Newell does not receive the credit that he does deserve. Despite being an obscure hero, Frederick Haynes Newell was in contact with the president and many other boards to ensure that his actions were in the best hands possible. We keep Tahoe blue thanks to you, Frederick Haynes Newell.